Uh, the first speaker is uh, Kees van der Klauw. He currently is a senior vice president at Philips Lighting. He joined Philips after having obtained his PhD in uh, electrical and electronics engineering uh, at the University of Delft. And at Philips he worked in uh, really many uh, different uh, management positions, uh, a list too long to be uh, 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 stated here. But he had positions in uh, flat panel display division, in the Philips consumer lifestyle division, uh, with Philips Lighting and with Philips Research. Um, since 2015, he is also chairman of the Aliens uh, for Internet of Things Innovation, and I heard that last week you still were in Brussels to uh, have a meeting on this. Um, in his presentation, he will guide us through uh, his views on innovation uh, in the field of uh, Philips Lighting or in the field of lighting in general, and I guess the Internet of Things will, uh, will be part of that uh, case. So, Case, okay, so the floor is yours. A lot is happening in the world of lighting. Yeah. It's going extremely fast, and, and you could you could say that lighting has been living in the darkness for the past hundred years, and now all of a sudden it's emerging. And you see it in the attention. And I think in the afternoon we will have more people. But lighting is hot. Lighting is sexy, and it is now uh, let's say emerging from the darkness because we get so many more opportunities to do the things that we always wanted to do in lighting. Yeah. Uh, with the new technologies. So I've made a selection. Uh, I, I will not discuss the whole uh, area of lighting, but I will focus on a specific aspect, uh, which was also addressed earlier this week in Barcelona, where you had the European Utilities Conference, where all the stakeholders in how to manage future cities were coming together, uh, and where we claim that lighting is going to play a, a very important role. Lighting, lighting infrastructure, if you want to make a city livable and manageable in the future, you can't do without thinking about lighting. So that is basically the focus uh, of, of my presentation. First, Philips Lighting. Uh, we are on our own feet, so always under the umbrella of, uh, of Royal Philips. But since early this year, we are on our own feet, and we are not a small one. We are actually the biggest lighting company in the world. And it's good to be proud of that, with uh, seven half billion sales with 34,000 people in, in 70 countries, with 75% uh, of our sales in professional areas, but still 25% in consumer, and I think you need both, because you see a rapid advancement in consumers that also spin off for professional. Um, we are number one in LED, and only five, what is it, six years ago, I remember we were talking about LEDification. How can we make these LEDs workable and lighting applications. Yeah? Now today, and I think at that time, the turnover in LEDs, or the, the part of the turnover of LEDs, what, what was it, four or five percent or so, max. Today, 56 percent of our revenues is in LEDs, and it's going like crazy. So in terms of innovation, you could say that innovating in the traditional light sources is over, and the whole focus is on applications of LEDs, but also beyond illumination, and that's what I'm going to talk about. And that's the last bullet, number one in connected. Yeah. The lighting with the advancements in electronic light sources, we have stepped into another world. Yeah. You could say going from conventional light sources into LEDs, it's a relatively small step because you stay within the luminaire, you stay within the light source and maybe even the socket doesn't change. But without knowing, we have stepped into an electronic world. We have stepped in an information technology world and that world is ten times faster than the traditional world of lighting. So let's have a look at, uh, at cities. What are the challenges in cities we see today? Yeah, there's a huge urbanization going on, and the prediction is that by 2030, 60% of all people in the world will live in big cities. Now, whether it's 65 or 45 or 50, actually it's not that important. It's a huge amount of people. So how are you going to manage these cities? How do you make them livable? Yeah? And then you should know that cities use 75% of all the energy in the world. And within those cities, sometimes 40% of the energy is used for lighting. So that is a big responsibility. That's a footprint that we have on this globe that is not sustainable. So something has to be done. At the same time, you see a trend which is in communication, being online, always on, as uh, uh, Professor Arts uh, mentioned uh, in his uh, uh, lecture for, for the acceptance of his position in, uh, in Tilburg, always on. So 97% of the people will have a mobile phone subscription or have some communication device walking around. So those are important trends. 
Also, lighting is impacted by those trends. Yeah? So what we see by the growing world population, but also by the industrialization and the convergence of people in big cities, more light is required. Yeah? The world needs more light. That's trend number one. The second trend is the world needs more energy efficient light, because we can't go on burning uh, the planet with the conventional way of lighting the planet. Yeah? And here's an example of something which we announced recently. Uh, a, a set or a, a series of uh, lamps with an efficiency of 200 lumen per watt. And I remember that, what was it, five years ago, this was world record news from the research lab, and today we have commercial products, 200 lumen per watt, which are going to replace, what is it, 75 or 80 percent of the sockets in uh, the Middle East. Yeah. So the shakes of, uh, I think this is Dubai, where we made an agreement that we are going to have a project uh, where, where energy efficiency is extremely important. Because also in the Middle East I realized that oil is getting scarce. Yeah. And these lamps actually are 10 times more efficient, 10 times more efficient than conventional lighting. And only in a few years we have achieved that. Well, not in a few years, actually people have been working on LEDs for 25 years to make them acceptable and then all of a sudden it was unstoppable. So we are now above 200 lumen per watt. And the last important trend, so the world needs more light, the world needs more energy efficient light, and the world needs more digital light. And with digital light we mean applications that go beyond the traditional on-off, or beyond the traditional uh, alternative to darkness. I think now we have the opportunity to make light really relevant. And this is a, an example of what we already do today, where light sources communicate with people, uh, in this case the mobile phone camera, where we modulate the light invisible to the eye and we can exchange information. And the nice thing about light is, it's line of sight. Yeah, where, depend where you are, I'm looking into that spot, that spot can talk to me, but when I'm in another position, that spot is talking to me. So you can have context-sensitive information. But if we look to the city, yeah, so all these opportunities are there. But how much light today is connected? Actually, it's virtually nothing. Yeah? You could say the leadification is going on, yeah, in terms of our revenue is more than 50%, but in the world the leadification still has a long way to go and let alone that we need to connect these light sources. If we really want to benefit the lighting infrastructure for purposes that go beyond lighting, such as information exchange, but I will show that you have many more opportunities, then we need to connect uh, this infrastructure. And today, less than 2% of the light sources is connected. So we have work to do, which is, by the way, related to the pretty clumsy way of controlling light in the past, with dimmers and hard copper wires, and of course we can do much better with this electronic light. This is an example of, uh, of a recent project. This is the Bay Bridge in San Francisco, where this, this, uh, this bridge is turned into a, a lively sculpture. Yeah? Uh, it's a project by Philips, where depending on the wind and the weather conditions, the light pattern on this bridge changes. Yeah? You could say, well, what a waste of energy. But it's also important that cities are livable and that they are attractive, that people like to be there, that it's a beacon, that it provides safety, security, relaxation. And if you can do that in a very energy efficient way, which is the case with these LEDs lighting, I think you have something strong. Yeah? We know that in many cities there are areas where people don't want to go because it's not safe, it's not attractive. And we know that with lighting, with good lighting, you can make it more attractive. Where the the value of real estate goes up, where the revenues of local shops go up. Yeah. Extremely important to keep cities livable. So here, the a summary of the situation today. There are 300 million street light points. By the way, there are worldwide in 2030, we expect that there is approximately 6 billion light points in the world, 6 billion. Yeah. And 300 million of them are in public lighting, street lighting. Yeah. Um, we also know that the average uh, life or the average age of public lighting is 20 years, yeah? which means it is from the stone age with efficiencies of what is it, 10, 20, 30 lumen per watt. Yeah? Maybe 40 lumen per watt for sodium. Yeah? But this is the opportunity. 20 years old, so it has to be replaced anyhow. Yeah? And it's to 40% of the energy consumption in the city. What an opportunity. Yeah? 
but only 2% is connected. So by going into LED, but at the same time going into connected lighting, with LEDs you have, let's say, 40% energy saving, and with connected lighting, with dimming and clever control, you can have another 30% dimming on top of that. I think the business case is clear. But it requires a lot of orchestration. In order to benefit from lighting, you need to have a platform. You can't just wire it in the one city and wire it in another way in another city or do it wireless. We need to converge on platforms. So, for the coming years, Philips Lighting Innovation is focused on the right light. And with the right light, I mean human-centric light. Why would we just have ugly white light in all these environments? Why would we have accept a standard in offices where elderly people are going to work? Yeah, the retirement age is continuously going to shift up. I think I will never retire. But that means I need a bit more light in order to do my work. Yeah? But, and this is possible. With intelligent, clever lighting, we can make sure that in certain environments you just get more light. Yeah? But we need to plan for it. Yeah? The right light for people, for plants, for animals, the right light for the world and for the right application. The second thing, connected operations. Yeah? Instead of having these sell and forget models, so sell the lamp and only if it breaks down the customer will return. No, stay in contact with that lamp find out how systems are used in the field, how we can improve them, how we can upgrade the software, how we can make them more uh, ambient aware, yeah? really what people need. And last but not least, evolving applications. If we have this network of light points, yeah? 300 million light points in the city that are connected, what can you do with it? Because this is a hell of an intelligent network where you can embed sensors. And, and everyone knows that a mesh network of relatively simple sensors provides much more intelligence and much more information than the best individual sensors. Yeah. We, we look at landslides by just looking at the GPS coordinates of individual luminaires. If you have a few thousand luminaires that provide you with that information, you can have accuracies that are not possible by having just one seismometer or one uh, super sensor in the city. Yeah. That is just one example. So, new applications where you use the lighting infrastructure for clever things that go beyond illumination. Here we are, the right light. Yeah. Right light means also safety, security, yeah. making sure that people are seen yeah, or that people don't walk into the darkness, yeah. but also responsive. Yeah. Uh, if there's no pedestrian, why would you have the light? Why don't you dim it? Yeah but also make it attractive to bring people to places and meet. Yeah. Connected operations, lots of retrofitting, because there is still a lot of out, old stuff uh, out there which we need to connect. And it's possible. With relatively simple means, with click-ons, we can connect even to uh, legacy systems. And here the new applications, which is very much about managing the city. Uh, we've made a movie, and unfortunately, I cannot show it in 3D. It was in 3D. In Barcelona, we had uh, an audience of 40 people with all these uh, 3D goggles. So it was really fun to see because people were looking around and uh, yeah, they were living in their own cocoon. But you will see it soon in 3D. But I have here a flat, uh, flattened version where I'm going to give you an impression of how a city in 2030 could look like. And that's not far away. That's only 50 years away. Yeah? So we didn't try to come up with a kind of Jetsons movie uh, 200 years from now. We tried to bridge between what is possible with the technology of today in a city 15 years from now. And this requires careful planning and platformization, but it can be done. So let's have a look at the movie. By the year 2030, more than 60% of the world's population will live in cities, with over 100 new megacities arising. Join us in a smart city of 2030. Less than 15 years from now, Highly energy efficient, quality light, 
comes as standard. But it is also an information highway. Connected streetlights stream data between millions of devices. Autonomous vehicles navigate roads safely thanks to sensors in streetlights that scan the road and transmit information, augmenting the vehicle's onboard sensors. Pressure on space will see public spaces extend underground. With seamless transition made possible by lighting that mimics natural daylight. The digital light system helps drones navigate and deliver items, even your coffee. While interactive light walls display art and make playtime fun for children. Beneath the city are urban farms that use little water and no pesticides, allowing plants and vegetables to be grown sustainably, reducing the distance between the farm and your fork. Mm, dinner is served. In the home, lighting synchronizes with everything, from your doorbell to your television. It preempts your needs and complements your well-being. A city like this is closer than you think. It's how we are taking light beyond illumination. Philips. Innovation and you. So is this far-fetched? It's only 15 years, and I don't think it's far-fetched because I'm going to show some examples of the ingredients, the building blocks that we have today. We have those projects, and that city doesn't exist yet. This is a virtual city, but it could be Eindhoven in the future, maybe Eindhoven at sea. You never know how much we are going to uh, burn in uh, conventional fuel. So let's have a look at what we have seen. 2030, lighting systems that can sense the environment and communicate. Yeah? I think situational awareness of knowing how the city behaves in terms of traffic densities, in terms of air pollution, uh, in terms of calamities, yeah, which areas to avoid, I think is extremely important. But how do you get that information? Of course, citizens are the mobile network themselves. They carry their phones. But if certain areas are no-go, there's no reference. Yeah? And also autonomous driving cars, they need a reference. So what is that reference? Well, if there's every 25, every 30 meter, if there's a light point, and it's not necessarily a pole, it could be on a wire, but lighting will be there. So that lighting infrastructure is an excellent reference structure for smart cities in the future by embedding sensors and communicating their knowledge about traffic densities, about air pollution, about noise to autonomous driving cars. And autonomous driving cars have a lot of intelligence on board but they still need real-time, highly reliable information from the outside. And believe me, that's not coming from a cloud service, that's way too slow. You need to have local networks that can communicate. So that's just an example of how a lighting infrastructure can contribute to this. Is it far-fetched? No. Because today we already are installing smart poles with 4G networks, which can be upgraded to 5G networks. And in Los Angeles, we have City Touch where we have an experiment now, and it's going to be rolled out and massively with sensors. We do audio sensing in Los Angeles. Yeah? And audio sensing means that we look at noise and noise abatement measurements. So how, what, is there too much noise in a certain area? Can we fingerprint? Do we know what kind of cars are, uh, are creating that noise? But also, typically for US, gunshot detection is being discussed. Can we, can we record or track incidents? And this is a, a network of sensors that do respect privacy, yeah, because we don't listen to actually the text that people speak. No, we listen, we make, we listen to sound bites, and we analyze locally and say, hey, this is, a, this is characteristic for an incident. And then, of course, the data can be shared with the local government, and it's up to them to decide what you do with it. But the same, the same things we already did here in Stratum Zijnd, in Eindhoven. So a great opportunity where you see that today technology is uh, playing a role in the future city. 
What we announced uh, two days ago is a 90,000 pole project in Jakarta. Uh, and we do it with 413 poles per day. So there's a rapid deployment of our city touch uh, installation where all the lights or half of the city will be connected to a central intelligence system. Yeah. Also the older stuff, the retrofit lights, but also newer lights that we will install. Yeah. Big project. Again, 2030, what we saw is underground. We saw people having, uh, what is it, uh, restaurants, uh, meeting places underground with natural light. And of course we can do that. We can sense the outside light, we can even mimic clouds passing by, we can mimic rain showers. I'm not going to say we're going to spray people wet, but the lighting conditions can be, be very, very natural. It can be done. Yeah? We've seen drones flying around. Now, drones need a reference. Drones, drones need navigation systems, but GPS doesn't work underground, unfortunately. But light works. Yeah? So is this far-fetched? I don't think so, because you already did it here in Eindhoven. You have been flying around with drones in Eindhoven that were communicating via light yeah, with centimeter accuracy, real time, very reliable infrastructure for, for navigation and context aware operations. Yeah. So it can be done. What we also do today, and this is a picture from Carrefour, where we have the visual light communication or the coded light implemented in a very cost effective installation at Carrefour. Carrefour is a hypermarket, I'm not sure whether you've been there, but they're times bigger than the largest supermarket here in Eindhoven, and you have to find your way. It's an experience, if you like shopping you can spend half a day, but if you just need your stuff, then you better make a plan. But how to find your way? Indoor, via this communication system. So they save 50% of energy with the latest LED lighting, and at the same time they get an infrastructure that can navigate you through the supermarket. Yeah? And if you like, you can even have pop-up messages. Uh, if you buy chicken, don't forget the herbs yeah, for the chicken, if you like that. Yeah? It's really en engaging customers in a much better way with retail, which is important for a city to be economically viable. And we announced in, uh, uh, in Spain two days ago that it's not only the Eindhoven uh, headquarters which is going to have a power over Ethernet uh, system, yeah, and we have quite a few more also in the Middle East and in, uh, in Bangalore, but also in, uh, in Spain we are going to have a what is it, 12 or 13 storey building which will be completely power over Ethernet and where every individual employee, yeah, including elderly people that need more light, can have individual control over their office lighting, no matter where they are. They go to this meeting room, and they say, well, actually, I need, I had a, a good uh, party last night. I need a bit of bluish light to wake me up. Can be done. Yeah. Today. It's like Muppet Lab, where the future is being invented today. Underground. Yeah. 2030. Urban farms. Because there's a lot of, let's say, low-value space yeah, underground. In the basement, uh, in, in, in certain garage areas. Yeah. Well, garage might not be low-value. It's pretty expensive. But there are lots of spaces which are not used. But with the right light, you can turn them into uh, vertical farms or city farms. And if you know, you know what the average traveling distance is of a lettuce in the United States before it hits your plate in a restaurant or at home. You know? Two and a half thousand kilometers. Yeah. That's more than the average tourist. Yeah. So the average lettuce travels two and a half thousand kilometers before it hits your mouth or your plate. Yeah. Crazy. So this cannot go on, because this is also a CO2 footprint. But by having the growing of salads, but also other things like fish farming uh, and herbs and, and more to come, by having that close to the end user, you first of all gain in freshness, you use a lot less water, you uh, don't use herbicides, and actually the quality of the food is much better. Yeah. Is it far-fetched? No, it's not, because we have, uh, and we are going to have also a lecture today. But uh, Grow Up was there to say, hey, we have this already running in London, yeah? and they do fish, and they do herbs and uh, salads. Yeah? So it can be done today. So this is lighting. This is creating lighting which is the best for people, for the best for cities, and where the lighting infrastructure goes beyond just on and off. Uh, uh, of the light. Yeah. It provides numerous opportunity 
to be more human-centric, but also be more relevant and provide the city with information. And this is a challenge. By 2030, the value of the lighting infrastructure providing all this smart information to you could be larger than the value of just spraying lumens on people and plants, etc. Yeah. We see a tremendous price erosion in the, the light sources, but we see a tremendous value increase in the use of data. Yeah. And that's why we have recommended to governments, uh, you make the right decision. If you only go for a dump new bulb in your infrastructure, you'll be locked out for these kind of innovations for decades to come. So you better now engage in connected lighting because this value is going to bring a lot of, or this information is going to bring a lot of value to your city in the future. And this is definitely where Philips Lighting is moving into. You see a shift apart from having human-centric lighting, what is best for people and plants, etc., which we can do much better with all this technology, but also using the data from that system to go into new applications. And this concludes more or less my talk. So the smart city of the future is closer than you think. Yeah. Rome was not built in one day, and a smart city is also not built in one day. But I think it's quite unique that what we have here in Eindhoven is a 15-year cooperation agreement where we're going to find out how the smart city looks like. And not just Philips and Heimans and, and the local government, no, with citizens. There are citizens involved in the experiments that we are going to do. Yeah. And that is why maybe the, uh, the, uh, the innovation is not in Philips, the innovation is around Philips. And we are inviting partners like the University of Eindhoven and all these clever uh, PhDs and students that help us to come up with great ideas. But even citizens, we ask them to participate to find out what is the best application of lighting. And with that, I conclude my talk. This is about lighting beyond illumination. Thank you.